Why is it selfish to hold on to energy that is not yours? I'm Mariah Russell and I'm going to explain that here today. So if we look at all energy as energy, it's not positive, it's not negative, we get rid of the duality, it's just simply energy. When we start to understand energy as energy that is achieving its highest good, energy that's achieving its reason to be in life, so to speak. If we look at energy as simply something that helps move things from place to place, you know, money's energy, food's energy, energy in our body's energy, work is energy. All of these things are different forms of energy. And a lot of people will like to say, oh, well, that's bad energy, or that's toxic energy, or that's missile broken energy, or something like that. I like to look at energy not as broken or bad, but simply as misaligned or in an improper place. There is a proper place for everything. Think of it as your house, you know. Everything has its home. A mess happens when things aren't in their home. When there are cups all over the counter, the cups aren't bad. The cups are just not where they need to be, which is either in the dishwasher or ideally in the cupboard, right? So that's what we're doing energetically as well. We're just putting things back to where they go and not judging them for being where they are. And a lot of times we want to hold on to energy. And we do this subconsciously, but we hold on to guilt, we hold on to shame, we hold on to anger and fear and all of these different things. And we just hold on to them tight. And partially it's because they've been in us for so long that we don't know what to do without them. They've been in us so long that we're afraid of what life will look like without them because we've learned the coping mechanisms to live with these specific energies in our field. And so we know what it feels like with these energies in our field, but we don't know what it feels like to have other energies in our field or not to have these energies in our field. And so that's scary. It's more scary to know we don't know how to cope without these than to continue to live with them because we've at least learned how to cope with them. And so we hold on to them. And one of the things I t teach a lot when I work with Kundalini energy with my clients is that one of the things that Kundalini energy does is it cleans. Uh, I also do a lot of Ho'oponopono work and the whole process there. It's all about continual, continual cleansing and cleaning. And how do we, in Kundalini, get the energy to go from the root of the earth through all of our chakras out the crown of our head? But we have to let it, that's the key. So Kundalini energy will come and it'll cleanse and it'll push. But if you hold on, it's gonna be a lot harder. So you have to allow these things to leave your body. The same thing like if you're getting a massage. If it hurts when somebody's pushing on a specific spot and you tense up, then it's gonna be harder for that part to release and for you to open. And so this is a beautiful thing where breath work comes in. Breathe, open, allow that healing, that energy to come in. But before it can come in, it needs a space. And so if we look at this on a larger scale, voids must exist before creation can come in. There's no space. We can't fill it. This is why meditation is so important. And so the idea of we need to create voids within ourselves for those beautiful things to grow, but a lot of times we have all these spaces filled with this guilt, shame, fear, anger, judgment, all of these things. And we say, it's bad. We get mad at it. We hold on to it. And what we really need to do is thank it and find a channel for it to flow to its highest good. Because it has a highest good too. Its good, highest good was in you teaching you something, but it has an even higher good when it goes to where it belongs. And when it goes to where it belongs, it can achieve its life purpose, its highest purpose too, 
while freeing you to achieve your life's purpose. But when you hold on to it, think of holding on to anybody. You know, somebody's trying to run away and you grab them hard and you hold them and you say, no, you can't run away. You're taking away their autonomy. You're holding on to them, it's not consensual. And you are no longer focusing on doing things to feed you and make you happy. All of your energy is focusing on holding on to this thing or this person that doesn't want to be held on to. And so think of it the same way energetically. You're holding on to these feelings and they're not giving you their consent. You're doing it. You're exerting your will over something else. And so what are all the different ways that we exert our will over other things and over other people? And why do we do it? We often do it out of fear, right? And how are you energetically consumed by holding on to these things rather than understanding that slowly, the more you love it, the more you love yourself, the more you cleanse, the more you clear, the more less you will lessen your grip and slowly allow it to go. And so you're allowing this energy that's not only hurting you and making you sick, to go so that you're healthy and clean and clear and in your highest good, but you're also allowing it to go and achieve its highest good. So it can go do all the beautiful things that it's here to do. Because remember, it's just energy. It's your mind that has given that emotion a specific thing. There are physiological reactions. There are lots of things that are innate to that feeling, but the meaning of that feeling is something that you gave to it. And so look at it and say, this feeling is just energy that's out of place. How do I allow that energy to go out of place? Cleanse the story, because the story doesn't matter. All that we can do is the present moment. So how do we tap into that present moment really deeply and say, this is energy that does not feel in alignment here anymore. How can I open myself to allow it to flow so it can do its highest good and I can be clear and I can be healed? So continue practicing this. Just how do you keep cleansing and opening and allowing and becoming more and more porous to all of these feelings, allowing them to come into you if you so desire but feel like a sieve as they come through. They come in, but they go through, and we don't hold on. Play around with that. I'd love to hear how this practice and how these thoughts resonate with you. Uh, please let me know in the comments. And if this video is useful for you, please like, comment, and share. And have a great day. Bye-bye.